Welcome to the lecture on generation of random variates. So, in the last lecture we had seen that how to generate the random numbers and these random numbers which were generated they were of uniform distribution. So, we had to see that the random number which we are generating they are having uniformity, they are independent and for that we also had the checks and tests for checking the uniformity and independence of these samples. But many a times you need the random variates which should follow certain kind of distribution. So, for that we need, so this method I mean in this lecture we will deal with the procedures for sampling from different continuous and distribute you know uh, discrete distributions. So, what we will see that you have the random numbers, you have the random generated samples from there you are going to have the variates. So, you are going to have the variates which are of certain distribution type. So, the it is assumed that distribution has been completely specified. So, you are going to be told that you have to generate the numbers which are of certain kind of distribution. It may be Weeble, it may be exponential, it may be Poisson, it may be triangular or so. So, that is known to you uh, and are used as the input to the simulation model. Now, techniques, so you have different kinds of techniques which are used for such generation of random variates and one of the method which is normally used is the inverse transform method. So, you have the particular uh, distribution function for that you have certain cumulative distribution function equation from there you are going to, so that equation is going to use the I mean to be used and from there you are going to get the variate which are going to be of following that particular type of distribution. Now, there are techniques like uh, inverse transform technique, acceptance rejection technique, these are the techniques normally used. Uh, we are going to discuss mostly on the inverse transform technique how it works. So, it is basically you have the equation, the the cumulative distribution function in that whatever you are getting that is r. So, this r will be taken as input. So, now earlier you generate the random numbers which are uniform. Now, we are using the equation and you are uh, transforming in an inverse manner this r will be used as input and the output will be those uh, numbers which are following this exponential distribution or Weeble distribution or so. So, the techniques will they are all assuming that you have source of uniform random numbers is available. So, you must have the random numbers available at source. This number can be generated by different kinds of generators. You can use the standard softwares like Excel or so also. So, if you put the rand function it will give you the number of generated they are normally uniform distributed numbers. Now, from there you have to calculate the exponential suppose variates. So, for that you are going to have the you know inverse transformation. So, what is the inverse transform technique? So, this technique is used to sample from discrete continuous or uniform type of distribution. So, or empirical kind of distributions and the goal is to develop a procedure for uh, generating x 1, x 2, x 3 all that which have a particular kind of distribution function. So, you have you for a particular type say any anything like Weeble exponential or gamma or so. So, and the technique is useful when C d f that is f x is of simple form. So, what we have is you have a particular you know cumulative distribution function uh, expression that expression is used for in the inverse transfer and that must be simple. So, that the inverse can be calculated in a simple way uh, otherwise this technique will not be so useful. Now, what is done in the case of these inverse transform technique? So, so first of all 
you will compute the CDF of desired random variables and then you are going to have set f x equal to r on the range of x. And now, so once you get f x equal to r, so f x has certain expression and x will be f inverse r. So, once you have uh, the f x equal to r, you are going to solve that equation. So, suppose it is exponential equation, you have to generate the exponential variates. In those cases, you have the cumulative function 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda x. So, like that, that will be equated to r i. And then from there, so it, that will be equated to r and from there r, you are going to get the solution for this x in terms of r. So, that will be solved. So, generate the uniform random numbers r 1, r 2, r 3 that is input itself. So, you are going to generate it, you will have that in hand and then you are computing the desired random variates. So, that is variate basically not variated, it is random variate. So, this you are going to generate the random variate. using this uh, uh, this formula x i will be f inverse r i. So, this way once you solve this equation you are going to get the variates which are of that typical distribution function. So, that is uh, suppose exponential or so. So, let us see by example if we say we are doing for exponential distribution. So, as we know in the ex case of exponential distribution, suppose you have the exponential distribution in that case as we know that the cumulative distribution function for exponential function is 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda x. So, that is 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda x. So, for x more than equal to 0 lambda is the mean and then it will be 0 otherwise. So, if x is less than 0. So, that is what we get in the case of exponential distribution. Now, what we see by the steps you have to compute the CDF. So, this is the CDF. So, f x will be 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda x. So, 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda and this will be the random variable. This will be now equated to r. So, once you equate that to r, so that will be you have to solve this, you have to find. Now, this r is known to you, you this r is given to you, these r, these are the random variables of uniform distribution. So, now anyway the meaning is that even if you are getting the uniform distribution numbers or you are getting any number which is typically of you know unif some certain type of distribution that has to be uniform. So, from there you are getting this number in uniform manner. So, it is just the inverse transfer. Now, in this case once you solve this what you get is e raised to the power minus lambda x will be so, this will go this side and this will be like 1 minus r. So, you are getting minus lambda x will be ln of 1 minus r and x will be minus 1 by lambda of ln of 1 minus r. Now, this r i is known to you. So, once you know this r i, you have different value of r i. So, once you have in a particular column r i, you can get generate the x i in the next column. So, in that case uh, you get the different x i's. Now, let us see for example, if one example is given that you have r i's given as 0.1306. 0 0.6597, 0 0.7965 
and 0 0.7696. Suppose these numbers of 5 numbers of random numbers are given to you. In that case, you are simply using the inverse transformation, you are going to get this x i's. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5 you can calculate. So, x 1 will be minus 1 by lambda. So, if the lambda is taken as mean as 1, in that case you are getting minus of ln 1 minus r. So, 1 minus 0 0.1306. Similarly, minus of ln so, whatever is value is there, you can calculate it and if this is computed out to be something like 0 0.14, 0 0.0431, 1 1.078, then 1.592, 1.468 or so. So, this way once you have the random number of uniform distribution, you can generate the exponential variates or any kind of variates that does not matter. You are using, you are calculating that using the inverse transformation method. Let us see how it works for other kind of you know distribution functions. So, let us see for uniform distribution. So, for uniform distribution as we know you have x uniformly distributed in a b suppose. So, as we know that in the case of uh, uniform distribution the probability f x small f x it will be f x will be 1 by b minus a if x is in between a and b and it will be 0 if it if it is less than a or more than b. So, that is what we know and if we try to find the c d f the c d f will be uh, 0 if x is less than a and it will be x minus a upon b minus a if it is between 0 to I mean a to b and then if it is more than b it is 1. So, in that case you you know the cumulative distribution function and once we know the cumulative distribution function then we can have the inverse transformation. So, for uniform distribution what we get is we know that we get f x as 1 by b minus a when a to b x varies and 0 otherwise. So, we get the cumulative distribution function like it will be 0 if x is less than a, it will be x minus a upon b minus a if a is x is in between a and b and it is 1 if x is more than b. So, f x will be x minus a upon b minus a that is basically the cumulative distribution function between when x is in between a and b and we are to find the uniformly distributed x i's between a and b. So, we are going to express this expression in and equate it to r and then we are going to have the inverse transformation. So, what we get is f x will be we are getting x minus a upon a minus b, b minus a basically. So, it will be b minus a and this is taken as r. So, once we get that then you can solve this equation. Now, once we get you are getting the this r, so you have to get x. So, what we get x will be equal to r into b minus a and plus a. So, once you have r's and you know that you have to find the x between a and b in that case in between a and b you can use 
this formula to find the different x i's. Now, let us see for another distribution if you have the Weibull distribution. In case of Weibull distribution again, we will have to find the uh, cumulative distribution function and we know that in the Weibull distribution you have three parameters alpha, beta and nu and the new location parameter we have to set it to 0. So, what we say normally for the time to failure this Weibull machine I mean transformation Weibull distribution is used. So, in that as we know we get f x as so for nu equal to 0 the location parameter we are taking as 0, we are getting f x as beta by alpha raised to the power beta x raised to the power beta minus 1 and e raised to the power minus of x by alpha raised to the power beta. So, this is for x greater than equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. So, this is this is the PDF of Weibull distribution for alpha and beta greater than equal to 0. Now, for that we have already seen the f x comes out to be so C d f is f x equal to 1 minus e raised to the power minus of x by alpha raised to the power beta for x more than equal to 0. Now, when we go for inverse transformation technique in this formula again so that is why we are going to equate it to r. So, 1 minus e raised to the power minus of x by alpha beta will be equal to r. Now, we have to find so this x will be basically taken as the capital x we are going to get this x i's. Now, this x we have to find the expression. So, what we see you will take that that side. So, 1 minus r so e raised to the power minus of x by alpha raised to the power beta will be 1 minus r. So, minus of x by alpha raised to the power beta will be ln of 1 minus r. This implies that x by alpha raised to the power beta will be minus of ln 1 minus r. So, x will be minus of ln 1 minus r raised to the power 1 by beta and this alpha will go that side. So, it will be multiplied. So, alpha multiplied by minus of ln 1 minus r raised to the power 1 by beta. So, this way once you have to calculate the Weibull variates and you are given the r i's that is random numbers of uniform distribution then using the transformation you have the parameter f alpha given you have the parameter beta given you have the r i's being given once you know that you can get x i's. So, once you have r i's on a on a column in the excel or so you can directly use the formula to uh, to calculate these x i's. So, this way the Weibull variates can be calculated. Now, we will do the inverse transform technique for the triangular distribution. So, how it is done for triangular distribution? Now, we know that in the case of triangular distribution you have the limits or the parameters is set between a, b and c. So, you have three limits. So, here suppose the variate has the p d f that is f x equal to it will be varying between 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. So, it is x if x is between 0 and 1, then it is 2 minus x if the 
x is more than 1 and less than equal to 2 and then it is 0 otherwise. So, this is the PDF for the triangular distribution. So, you will get the cumulative distribution function. In the cumulative distribution function, you can further write f x as 0 if it is less than 0, if x is less than equal to 0, it will be x square by 2 for 0 to x to 1 and it will be 1 minus 2 minus x square by 2 for 1 to x to 2. So, 1 x is less more than 1 and less than 2 it will be 1 minus 2 minus x square upon 2. So, once we get that now you have the two places you will have to have the expression put in and then that will be set equal to r and then you will get the inverse transformation equation being used. So, what you do is you are for 0 to 1 you have to find. So, for x between 0 to 1 you have this formula. So, this will be f x that is equated to r this will be x square by 2. So, if you do the inverse transformation x will be equal to 2 r under root. So, x will be 2 r under root and r will be varying from 0 to 1 by 2. So, x is varying from 0 to 1. So, r will be varying from 0 to 1 by 2. Similarly, when the x value is between 1 and 2, then you have this as the CDF. So, for 1 to x is more than 1 and less than equal to 2, you have r equal to 1 minus 2 minus x square upon 2. So, now again this equation is to be solved using the inverse transformation method. So, that from there you can say you get it as 2 minus x square will be equal to 2 into 1 minus r. So, 2 minus x will be, so you can 2 minus x will be equal to under root 2 into 1 minus r and x will be equal to 2 minus under root 2 into 1 minus r. So, this is the inverse transformation expression which tells that once you know the r in a triangular distribution from there you can get the different values of x i's. So, as the technique indicates that whichever distribution is given to you you can always go for getting the CDF first. Once you get the CDF, then in that case from that CDF, you are equating that CDF expression to that random number generated. And once you have that random number generated expression, then you have to just solve for x. So, in the CDF, the capital X will come, which are the random variables which you have to find and the inverse equation will tell you the uh, or the values which you get that will be the variates for that particular distribution. Now, there is so this can method can be applied even to the discrete distributions, even to the empirical distributions and so on. So, this is the method which is used more popularly. Now, there is another method which is used is the acceptance rejection technique. So, in the acceptance rejection technique, what we do there is you have suppose a uniform distribution in that you have to have the, the variates between 1 by 4 and 1. 
So, in that if you are basically predicting any number and if that falls in that range of 1 by 4 is to 1 you are going to accept it, if not you are going to reject it. So, that acceptance and rejection condition is given and it has to satisfy that condition if it satisfies if it is in that range you are going to take it and otherwise you are going to reject it. So, that is another technique which is also used you can read it from the standard book of either Banks or from the book of Lauren Kelton or any book standard book of modeling and simulation of discrete event systems. Thank you very much.